Hello friends, so today I'm going to talk about an opportunity for students who are doing bachelor's or master's in mathematics or any other stream and they are interested in pursuing higher studies or PhD in mathematics. So you are probably aware about uh, institutes in India who offer PhD programs in mathematics, but there are even more universities in US uh, which offer PhD in mathematics. So in this video, I'll talk about what it takes to apply for a PhD position in mathematics in a US university. So most of the facts which I have presented here is based on my memory and some of it may be wrong. But in this video, I just want to tell that what this opportunity is and what you need to do in order to achieve this opportunity. So first, let's talk about who can apply for a PhD in mathematics in a US university. So if you already graduated or a final year student of any master's program like MA or MSc or MPhil or MTech in any subject, or you are a BTech student in any engineering stream, or if you are an exceptional bachelor student in mathematics, then you can apply for a PhD program in US. So just to show you what I mean by exceptional bachelors in mathematics, I will show you a snippet from University of Michigan Mass Department uh, website. So here they have answered a question that what are the minimum academic credentials required from foreign applicants to your PhD programs? And you can see that they say that for applicants from India, uh, Rackham requires a master's degree in all fields. However, they can review applications from students enrolled in a three-year mathematics program at CMI and ISI. So even if you are a final year BSc student at CMI or ISI, uh, you can apply for a PhD position here in University of Michigan. And that's true for any other university as well. So if you are a bachelor student in mathematics and you think that you are exceptional, uh, you can apply for a PhD program in US. Just write to the university in advance and ask if I'll apply, will my application will be considered or not? And they should reply back to you. So what all do you need to apply for a PhD program in mathematics in US? So you need letters of recommendation. We'll talk about it more. Next, you need transcripts from your degree program, be it master's or BTEC. Then you'll need your uh, resume. Then you need a letter which is called a statement of purpose. Then you need your TOEFL score, your GRE general score and GRE subject score. Let's talk about them individually. So what is a letter of recommendation? So faculties with whom you have taken a course or done a project or any other faculty who know you in some capacity. These faculties can recommend you for admission. So basically they can write a letter supporting your candidature. So in my view, letter of recommendation is probably the most important part of the application. So in most cases, you will need three letter of recommendations. Okay. So in, you can have more, but most of the universities will require at least three letters of recommendation. So whoever is recommending you make sure that they write good things about you. So it is very important that recommender knows you well, knows your mathematical background very well and based on these recommend you strongly for admission. So it is always great to have at least one uh, internationally well-known mathematics researcher as your recommender. So one way to get in contact with such a mathematician is to do summer projects under mathematicians from top research institutes like TIFR, IESC, CMI, IMSC, ISI, HRI or other such institutes like this. You can also participate in summer programs like VSRP from TIFR, then MTTAs, SPIM from HRI, etc. And you can get in touch with such mathematicians. So next, let's talk about transcript and resume. So your application really stands out if you have taken advanced courses like function analysis, harmonic analysis, commutative algebra, algebraic geometry, or some advanced PD or some courses like that. So it changes from university to university, but overall you should have a decent grade or marks in your master's program or equivalent program. 
So when you are writing your resume, mention about your grades, courses, any awards, publications and projects if there are any on the first page. If you have worked with softwares like MATLAB, Mathematica, or if you have worked with programming languages like C, C++, Python, Latex, etc., you should definitely mention them. So you should also mention your non-academic roles. For example, if you have been a member of some club at your university or college, but you should mention all these details only at the end in your resume. So next, let's talk about the statement of purpose. So a statement of purpose is a short document, maximum two pages, where you write about your mathematical inclination and why you are a good fit to the department you are applying. So what a statement of purpose should include. So the opening paragraph should be about your inclination towards mathematics and why you like mathematics. Then what motivated you to pursue higher education in mathematics since you are applying for PhD? What have you learned in advanced mathematics? Mention some advanced courses you have done. Mention about some concepts or theorems which you have enjoyed reading in mathematics. Mention about your projects which you have done and what you have learned from these projects. Linking with these projects, talk about a research area in which you want to do your PhD. Then mention names of some faculties from the department in which you are applying under whom you want to do PhD. So these are all the things a statement of purpose should include and you should try to write concisely in two pages. So next let's talk about TOEFL or IELTS exam. So what I have heard is that TOEFL is preferred by many American universities and so I would recommend you to appear for a TOEFL exam. TOEFL has basically four components, speaking, listening, reading and writing and all of them are just out of 30 marks. So in most universities, they require a score of 24 or above in speaking and overall a score of 90 or above. So a 24 in speaking is required because when you take admission in PhD, you will also be a teaching assistant. That's how you get a stipend. And so they make sure that you have good English speaking skills. I personally don't think that TOEFL is a hard test. I think that three months of practice from online resources should be enough to get a good score and uh, you need not join any coaching centers to prepare for TOEFL. The TOEFL test is conducted on several centers across India throughout the year. Next let's talk about GRE general and subject tests. So these are two different tests and first I would like to say that these tests are not required by many universities but some recommends uh, to submit these scores. So GRE general test has two components, uh, math and English, and both these components are evaluated from a score of 120. So a math score of greater than or equal to 115 and an English score of greater than or equal to 105 should be good enough for most universities. So math in GRE general test is I think up to class eight level but in GRE subject test is based on advanced mathematics. But again, most of the syllabus is from classes 11 and 12. A score of 85 percentile and above in GRE subject test should be good enough for most universities. So you can keep this thing in mind. Suppose that you gave this test and in both or in one of these tests, your scores are not good. Then you may choose to not report these scores for admission if these scores are not required by the university. GRE general test is offered throughout the year like TOEFL, but GRE subject tests are offered only thrice in a year in months of September, October and April. So next let's talk about typical timeline for applying to a PhD program in US. So assuming you are in final year of your degree program starting August. You can follow the below timeline for your PhD applications in US universities. So you started your final year in August. In August, uh, assuming you are preparing for it in advance, in August you can appear for the GRE general test. Then in September, you can appear for the TOEFL test. In October, you can appear for the GRE subject test. In December, you will complete applications for universities. So most universities will have deadline in December. So universities start looking at applications from January and in February they will uh, send the first round of results. So 
whoever they selected they will communicate with them and then they will keep some students as waitlisted so depending on if some student didn't join um, that program they will uh, ask waitlisted candidates in order uh, from march to may and so by end of may you should have an idea if you got an offer from some university or not so if things go well you'll finish your degree in may and you'll have a phd offer by the same time in august uh, exactly after one year you will join a us university for your phd program so let's talk about how much it costs to apply for a phd position in us so toefl costs around 14000 rupees jre general 16000 jre subject 11000 For university, a typical application fee is from seven thousand to eight thousand. Then, for both TOEFL and GRE, in four universities you can send your scores for free. But if you are applying to more than four universities, a uh, reporting cost of your score to extra universities is dollar twenty each university. That is fifteen hundred rupees. For GRE, it is dollar twenty seven. That is two thousand rupees. So if you can make a calculation, I think. If you are applying to ten universities for PhD position, you will have to spend approximately one lakh fifty thousand rupees on your applications. So, depending on your budget, you can't apply to all universities in US. It means you need to choose certain universities in which you want to apply. So, to make a list, first thing you want to look at is the ranking of best graduate schools in mathematics. So, you can go to this link of US News. and you can see ranking of universities based on their mathematics program so depending on your budget you need to determine the number of universities you want to apply so for example if your budget is say 1 lakh then probably you can apply up to 8 universities and if your budget is say 2 lakhs then you can apply up to 15 universities so you need to make a nice mix of universities uh, from different ranks so you can choose some from top 10 then 11 to 20 then 21 to 30 31 to 40 41 to 50 etc so for example i am giving uh, data from an actual candidate who applied for phd in mathematics in us so uh, this friend had a toefl score of 105 jre general score of 321 jre subject score of 94 percentile and the student applied to nine universities two in top 10 three from 11 to 20 three from 21 to 30 and one from 31 to 40 and the student got two offers one offer from a top 10 university and another offer from a university ranked between 11 to 20 so probably you know that uh, while doing phd from anywhere in the world you earn a stipend so let's talk about what is the stipend you get when you do a phd from us what are some expenses and what are the opportunities you get after completing your phd so in a phd program at a un university first of all you pay no tuition fee so in most of the new universities you will get a tuition waiver so you will not have to pay any fee and you earn a stipend of around 2000 dollars so this varies a lot depending on the location so some locations are expensive so you get more stipend and some are not so expensive so you get uh, less stipend but it's typically around $2000 so after your living expenses and you have to pay a one time insurance fee every year or every semester and assuming that you are doing a, a round trip to india once in a year after all this you can easily save 800 to $1000 every month okay from your stipend which amounts to around 60 to 70000 rupees per month so as far as opportunities are concerned you get opportunities both in academics as well as industry after your phd so in academics you can join a postdoc position or you can join a research position in some lab and in industry you get a variety of opportunities in fact it doesn't matter in which area of mathematics you have done your phd be it in algebra a number theory or analysis you can always find industries uh, which are suitable for you and they are looking candidates from all mathematical areas so that's the end of the video thank you for listening ask your questions in comments join our telegram channel for some sample statement of purpose or resume follow us on facebook and telegram uh, these links are given in description
again thank you for listening